Hey everybody, it's Jamie here and welcome to Travel Blog Jamie. Thank you for joining me, you awesome people. So, I often get asked about my favourite cruise line or ship and it's a really tough one because there's something to be enjoyed on every cruise line and ship. A great cruise can depend on so many variables other than the cruise line and ship. The itinerary, the weather, the crew, sea conditions, even your personal life. However, in this vlog, I'm going to explore those cruise lines and ships that surprised me most for all the right reasons, which will come out on top. Let's find out. Before we go any further, can I ask a favour please? Can you give this video a cheeky little like and subscribe for weekly travel vlogs released Wednesdays and at the weekends? Thank you for your support and who else can we thank? Ah, thank you, Jesus. So the first cruise line and ship on my list of the biggest surprises is Cunard, Cunard and Queen Victoria. Cunard is a British shipping and cruise line based at Carnival House, Southampton, UK and has three ships, Queen Mary II, Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth, although soon to be joined by the brand new Queen Anne. Queen Victoria, a Vista class ship, has been in service since 2007 and has a capacity of 2,008 passengers. She is considered a mid-sized ship and as with the Cunard brand, I thought this experience may have been far too formal and pretentious for me, certainly based on some of the people I encountered on some of the Cunard Facebook groups. You know who you are, you naughty people, and shame on you with your superiority complexes. However, the experience was totally in a league of its own and I didn't once come across the kind of keyboard warriors on those groups. Firstly, the ship is stunning with its regal atrium and staircases, beautiful spacious dining rooms with high quality food and exceptional service. There's the unique and much loved afternoon tea in the ballroom which is such a wonderful occasion and a must do on Cunard. The dress code on Cunard is quite rightly enforced, otherwise what is the point of having one? But it's not as formal as it used to be. Gents no longer have to wear jackets during the evenings for example. And I have zero interest in wearing a jacket every day on holiday, I can tell you. I felt comfortable and never out of place and you won't either. The deck space on Queen Victoria is fantastic with outdoor pools, traditional wooden decking, a promenade deck that circles the whole ship and plenty of areas to relax. The spa and thermal suite are a real treat with a fantastic hydro pool and lots of lounges to kick back and relax. A special mention to the passengers as well. This might sound odd but I met some wonderfully warm, caring and funny people on this ship who I will never forget. One of whom had me in tears with the humbling story of how they came to be on Queen Victoria following the recent loss of their partner through cancer. It was as uplifting and gave perspective as much as it was heartbreaking. In all, this voyage far exceeded my expectations and in spite of the higher cost than some of the cruise lines, I can absolutely see where the extra went in terms of a little unexpected luxury and I can't wait for the next cruise with Cunard which will be on board Queen Anne. Oh my goodness, I nearly forgot to mention the all-inclusive room service. It is awesome. Whew, quick change. The second cruise line and ship on my list of biggest surprises is Disney Cruise Line and Disney Magic, the very first Disney cruise ship which launched in 1998. Disney Cruise Line is a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company and currently operates five ships. The Magic, Dream, Wonder, Fantasy and Wish. Further three ships will join the fleet in 2024 and 2025, the next known and named to be Disney Treasure. So Disney is really intent on expanding this brand. Disney Magic has a passenger capacity of 2,700 with 875 staterooms. Now, I got up super early to watch this ship sailing to Southampton Port prior to my embarkation and as she gracefully glided into berth, I was mesmerized. And cute fact, the ship has 20 bright yellow lifeboats, which along with the black, red and white colors of the ship perfectly match the colors of my boy Mickey Mouse. Embarkation was such a surprise when the crew announced my arrival and you're greeted by some well-known Disney characters and the cruise director for a cheery musical welcome before heading off to start your cruise holiday. 
I absolutely loved my stateroom on board for the sense of space and the sheer luxury of a separate bathroom and WC. Plus, my cabin stewardess was probably one of the most professional and friendly I've ever had. A big mention to the dining arrangements as well. You rotate dining rooms and their unique, sometimes interactive experiences. And better still, your waiting staff rotate with you. The food was excellent, the service exceptional, and I rarely felt so well looked after during meal times. I was actually quite emotional the last morning saying goodbye to the wonderful crew. Talking of emotions, there was something about the Disney dream show in the stunning theatre that sparked so much nostalgia for me, and indeed there's a scene about the loss of a father which I had recently experienced and as I was vlogging and talking about this, I literally started sobbing on camera. This was a scene I left in the vlog because it was so raw and I wanted people to know that it's okay to share these feelings, myself included. The messages incoming from my followers were of their own stories of loss and they were overwhelming, but it felt like a global support group coming together. What an absolutely incredible feeling. But back to the ship, the facilities, they were excellent. The water slides, one of which takes you over the side of the ship, the adults only pool with hot tubs and coffee shop, plus the adults only bar, all were superb for travelers like ourselves who don't have children. And indeed those poolside froses were delicious. A Disney cruise comes with a price tag, but the experience exceeded expectations and we can't wait to join the latest in the fleet, Disney Wish, in Florida this summer for our Bahamas cruise. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Next up is Morella Cruises and Morella Explorer 2. Morella Cruises, formerly Thomson Cruises, is a British cruise line operated by TUI UK, offering fly cruise holidays from the UK around Europe, the Caribbean, Caribbean, USA and Asia. Morella comes with something of a reputation. The expression butlins at sea is often used in the UK to describe Morella and suggests something lowbrow, lacking in quality and a bit tacky. I absolutely loathe this saying because it smacks of superiority complex, just plain and simple unpleasant. Also unfair because Butlins is a great family brand and Morella is no exception. There are currently four ships in the Morella fleet, Discovery, previously Royal Caribbean Splendour of the Seas, the imaginatively named Discovery 2, previously Royal Caribbean Legend of the Seas, Explorer, previously Celebrity Galaxy and Mind Sheaf 1, and another imaginative name, Explorer 2, previously Celebrity Century and Sky Sea Golden Era, and the adults only ship in the fleet. Soon, Morella will be welcoming Morella Voyager, previously Celebrity Mercury. Yes, there's a running theme here, isn't there? So, what is so surprising about this brand and Explorer 2? Well, the ships are all mid-sized and never feel overly crowded to me, and Explorer 2 is no exception, with a capacity of 1,814 passengers. She has great sized heated pools, plenty of deck space, and as an all-inclusive cruise holiday experience, all your drinks, gratuities and food are taken care of. You can pay extra for some speciality dining venues if you want more variety and whilst I'm on the subject of food, in spite of some of the online comments, we actually very much enjoyed the food on board. Take a look at some of this. Morella also has one of the happiest, smiliest, friendliest crew in my humble opinion. And one of the best things about this cruise line are the itineraries which are totally stand out from the competition. So much so we have another two Morella cruises booked for this year alone. I can't wait to share these vlogs with you. This is a super casual, fun and friendly cruise line which has won me over. One cruise experience I was very cautious about in advance was Virgin Voyages, but I always say find out for yourselves. So I took the plunge and booked on to Scarlet Lady. I needn't have worried as I had a fabulous week on board this unique cruise line and brand. Virgin Voyages is an adult only cruise line with Scarlet Lady named after the second Virgin Atlantic plane, completed in 2020 and with a passenger capacity of 2,770. 
The main complaints from possible customers were about the aesthetics of the ship, with its grey and red colour scheme, unique aft, almost resembling a Miami high-rise, and lack of swimming facilities. Cabins also had a touch of IKEA about them, which didn't scream luxury brand, given the steep prices to cruise this line. But this ship is more than just aesthetics alone. The food is all-inclusive and it is great. There are no main dining rooms or buffets here. Every restaurant is uniquely themed with a wide range of menus from steakhouse, Korean barbecue, vegetarian to Mexican and more casual offerings like 24-hour breakfasts, pizza, paninis and ramen. Oh my goodness, I love ramen. The food was a big win in my opinion. You'll also find some of the best and most unique facilities and entertainment on board Virgin Voyages. And whilst it isn't to everyone's taste, I love the range, even down to private karaoke booths, late night club and open deck facilities to bring out the child in us all. I don't need any excuses there. I did miss a good sized pool as I am a water baby and I still think it's a mistake to not have something bigger or more of them but there was plenty of relaxation and fun to be had in equal measure. In fact, whilst I know people view this as a party ship, the truth is it can be, but you can also experience a simply relaxing time as well with a huge spa and thermal suite and lots of yoga, meditation and fitness classes too. Obviously, I went to all of those, didn't I? Life is what you make it on this casual, bright and modern take on cruising. You'll even get to experience Scarlet Night where dressing up in red is absolutely encouraged. Virgin Voyages is one of the biggest surprises for me in this cruise lineup. Next up, Fred Olsen Cruise Line and Borealis, sailing since 2021 and previously Holland America's Rotterdam. Fred Olsen Cruise Lines is a UK-based, Norwegian-owned cruise line with three small cruise ships. With a passenger capacity of 1,404, Borealis is one of the smaller cruise ships I've sailed on and one which offers most space for its passengers. It's never busy anywhere and I love the calm and laid-back vibe on board. Now, when I booked this particular cruise, my followers immediately wondered if I'd chosen wisely because the average age of passenger on board is certainly 25-ish years north of my age. No snarky comments about my age, please, or I will put you over my knee. And let me be perfectly honest with you, I don't give a rat's backside about the age of passengers on board and it never impacts on me and the enjoyment of my holiday. I've never really understood the obsession with age, to be honest. Let me tell you why I love the experience on Fred Olsen Borealis, apart from the serenity on board. I was in love with the fabulous open decks, and in particular, the pool area, equipped with retractable roof for all weather types, a really nicely heated large pool, hot tubs, daytime barbecues, poolside entertainment, and a beautiful lounge area. It was one of my favorite spots on board. But let's also talk about the crew. They were exceptional for sure, all of them. And I've rarely been looked after so attentively. Hello, oh, hello. Hello. how Welcome are you? To the beautiful Borealis restaurant. Thank yeah? you. Nice to see you. How's your day been today? Awesome. We have some lovely delights awaiting for you tonight. Make We're looking forward to it. Thank Please you so sir. much for your welcome. You're most welcome. <laughs> I have also never seen so many female members of staff and I absolutely applaud seeing more women in a range of roles on board cruise ships. And let's talk food. I can hand on heart say that this cruise offers some of the best food we have ever had at sea. In addition, speciality dining comes in at just £10 per person and the volume and quality are fantastic. Having two Asian restaurants on board such a small ship is a massive win for me as it's one of my favourite cuisines, as you probably already know. Even the buffet had various cooking stations where sumptuous food was made fresh in front of your very eyes. Just delicious. Trust me on this one. And finally, a very honourable mention has to go to Pino Cruises and Iona for one of the best value cruise holidays I have experienced and with one of the biggest varieties of eateries at sea and a huge number of pools, infinity pools, hot tubs and infinity hot tubs to enjoy, in my humble opinion. Iona is an excellence class cruise ship in service for Pino Cruises, a subsidiary of the Carnival Corporation 
and she is one of seven in the PNR UK fleet, not to be confused with PNR Australia or, for the very misinformed, PNR Ferries, which is a completely different company, by the way. Iona is a mega ship holding up to 5,206 passengers. Holy macaroni and slap me in the belly with a wet fish. On our cruise recently, we were told it was officially the busiest PO cruise in the history of PO cruises. So we were naturally very worried about long wait times for check in, getting served in bars, and wait times for tables in restaurants. Well, fortunately, the crew handled these numbers admirably throughout. We only experienced a disappointing delay once embarkation had been completed. But after that, zero lines or wait times for the whole week. We paid little over £400 each for our week on Iona. We were even given a free upgrade to a lovely balcony cabin. Drinks in all bars are reasonably priced and there's a wide range of dining included in the cruise fare with some exceptional meals, including in some of the specialty restaurants which are very strong contenders across any cruise line in my humble opinion. And those pools and hot tubs, eight of which are blessed with the infinity design. Thank you, Jesus. This really was a very good value cruise and we had a fantastic time on board. By the way, I was also told in no uncertain terms by a restaurant manager that I, Jamie, travel blog Jamie, am a very nice passenger. How are you? Hello, on board. Thank you. Very nice passenger. Very nice passenger. Very nice passenger. Very nice passenger. And this moment will live on with me forever and ever. We will be back on Iona for a Norwegian cruise in May and we'll also be sailing the brand new Piano Avia very soon. Alrighty, now it's your turn. Which cruise lines and ships have given you all the feels and surprised you most for all the right reasons? Drop those comments below and I will get back to you. Next time, I will be talking about those cruise lines and ships that have disappointed me the most. Holy macaroni! So make sure you turn on those notifications and get ready to at me with your disappointment and hatred when you find out what's on that list. For now, thank you for watching and don't forget to follow Travel Blog Jamie on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. <laughs> oh, you are so cringe, Jamie. Why are you so cringe? <sighs> this is the way.